Today's demonstration will be with the TigerGraph User Interface Toolkit, the Supply Chain Edition. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you a couple of different interfaces for perhaps uh, supply executives, management, maintenance, scheduling uh, team members, as well as perhaps analysts. Each of these personas have a, have a different way of interacting with this. Obviously, today's uh, Tiger Graph Toolkit will uh, illustrate uh, how the front end for laypersons who don't know about Tiger Graph on the back end uh, would be able to integrate with that. In our first persona, what we want to look at now is a dashboard, a series of queries. And again, these may, um, these may be a combination of things that already you have in an SAP system or in a Tableau style system. The difference is the queries here now are doing deep link analysis and or uh, functions similar to those other kinds of things. So what we see now are widgets where I can click, uh, I can actually do dynamic queries back through Tiger Graph into the database. And as you see, I'm deselecting different items. I can do similar things with pie graphs, et cetera. One of the other things that we can do here is something called a risk grid. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm dynamically giving the user the ability to set the thresholds, rerun a Tiger Graph algorithm on the back without knowing anything about Tiger Graph. In this case, I may decide that inventory shortage is actually much more important. I may also realize that something like regional disruption or compliance uh, may actually not apply to mine. And as I redraw these different uh, sliders, what these are doing is these are connecting dynamically uh, to a REST endpoint uh, to Tiger Graph on the back end. What I can do now is I click over here and you can see now my risk grid has redrawn. So in a simple set of uh, clicks, I've been able to uh, identify now how do I interact with Tiger Graph on the front end. The second thing is I see lots of different kinds uh, of grids. Now I can do recommendations or scorings. Um, I can see in this case, I have multiple kinds of dashboard elements that are querying Tiger Graph. Um, where I can go in and look at things like capacity planning, the full end-to-end uh, 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 -end pipeline of what I'm doing inside of my uh, supply chain. The second thing that I can do is get a bit more prescriptive. So in this case, I may have uh, uh, basically algorithms or accumulators in Tiger Graph, things that are giving me indications, smart machine learning algorithms to say, if you do these things, you will save these kinds of dollars. Again, they're simple and easy to read here uh, in, in, in the front end, but they're actually doing the query back through Tiger Graph. The second thing that I can do now is I can actually start to look for bottlenecks. I have this concept of time on the bottom. And what I'm doing now is I'm doing dynamic uh, G SQL back to the back end. What I can do is I can actually pick a product. And now what I'm doing is I'm querying uh, Tiger Graph to say, show me uh, a bill of materials and color code this in such a way where things are risky or as a scheduler or a planner, I can now see where these potential bottlenecks are, right? What I have that ability to do now is I can actually click on one of these individual nodes. You can see it pop out over here. Um, again, that's a dynamic query to the back end of Tiger Graph. I can see all the attributes or information that are associated with it. I can set thresholds or where they're color coding. And you can see when the inventory shortage of these gets red, uh, again, I'm querying Tiger Graph and then I'm color coding it for the user. And then I can actually come over here and set those thresholds dynamically uh, for what are those kinds of uh, elements that we have there. So again, point and, uh, point and click and I'm interacting now with Tiger Graph. The second thing that I can do is I can actually do um, real-time KPIs on the bottom. And again, these could be um, accumulators or algorithms on the backside, but again, they're, they're shown to me now as simple uh, dashboard widgets. Uh, and as we mentioned previously, everything in the UI toolkit can either connect into uh, SAP dashboards or Tableau uh, dashboards or vice versa. Now what you can see is that's only one view of the graph. So what I've done now is I've looked at the bill of material. It looks like I have a few risk items. What I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna select one of those for further exploration. I'm also going to look at this one over here and then find out sort of what it looks like uh, as well because I see it's yellow in its uh, predecessor in the bill of materials. Now, when I look at locations, this is a second part of my graph where I can say, well, just because I have all the parts and they're ready to go, I may not have at my location time or scheduling capability to do that. So I'm going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to go add that to my Explorer. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how those uh, items are interconnected uh, from the back end in Tiger Graph. The last leg here is I have resources. I actually see that there may be a machine or an assembly device 
uh, in this case that is also red, which means that it could be any three of these items now, uh, perhaps that, that I need to go investigate. So now what I'll do uh, is I'll actually go investigate those. So now by simply clicking over here, what you see now um, are those three individual nodes. And again, I'm querying Tiger Graph on the back end. And now as a layperson, what I'm looking to do is look for the relationships of where the real bottleneck is between those red things. Is it the bill of materials? Is it the location? Or is it the machine? Or it could be a combination of those. And so what I'm trying to do now is by simply double clicking on these, I can start to see, well, it looks like that other item that I mentioned uh, or clicked on over here is in fact interconnected. I can also look at the resource. Um, and as I click through this now, what I'm doing is I'm starting to get the bigger picture uh, for that. Now I clicked on a very large node in this case where I can throttle those. So what I would don't want to do is overwhelm uh, the visual user interface. And in this case, um, what I can do is I can pick the top 10 uh, links for what those are. What it's going to do now is you can tell in a very fast uh, uh, style there, I've been able to um, uh, basically show those, right? So what I can do also is I can come over to the right and I can change this to something that I can uh, read and react a bit more on um, and, and I can see how those things uh, interconnect up here. The other element that I can do um, is I can start to color these nodes, etc. So what I've been able to do now is show this full interconnection uh, of parts and where their dependencies are uh, to be able to do that, right? The other thing that I can do while I'm here as part of the UI toolkit um, is actually go in and build my own dashboard. So I have the ability to go grab these kinds of elements. I can go grab uh, these different parts, these maps, um, these risk kinds of things, right? Um, and what I'm able to do now is configure uh, simply and easily um, how I see these different elements for different kinds of users. And again, the whole point of this uh, uh, toolkit uh, for supply chain with Tiger Graph is to allow you to build and customize your applications in a fast and flexible way.